Hello, my name is Luby, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Last time we uh, celebrated Hanako's birthday, and this time we're continuing with that. Well, I mean, not, not with the birthday, with her route. <laughs> the hammering of a fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded into my head. Once, twice, three times, I let out a long, annoyed breath and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whoever it is to just go away. I feel pretty damn awful. My face feels like it's cast out of lead, my arms feel heavy, and I feel very queasy. It's been like this since I woke up half an hour ago, and I can't summon the energy to pick myself up out of bed. For context, um, Hisao, Lily, and Hanako drank a lot of alcohol last night. <laughs> so, this is what they call a hangover. I wonder if perhaps this is the best treatment for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult. Considering how unpleasant this is, it's not something I want to repeat. A series of thumps rings out again, reverberating around the small room. I wish they'd just give up already. I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Seconds pass, turning to minutes. Since no more knocks are coming from the door, whoever, ha whoever it was must have left. Thank goodness. Looking to my clock, the time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for class is approaching. I don't think I can manage it, though. <laughs> I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without needing to look in the mirror to confirm it, too. The morning rush has given me enough time to stand outside the classroom for a little while without looking too suspicious. I hope the Muto doesn't ask any awkward questions about my not attending school yesterday. I was sick, that much is true, it's just the reasons for it that I have to hide. Confident in Gebaitha tactical omission of certain truths, I stride into the classroom doing my best to appear normal. The instant I open the door and take a single step in, I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There's no way I'm imagining this and I've making any attempt to hide it. My eyes take a quick sweep around the classroom and I spot Hanako. We make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. Did she spill the beans? Muto may be okay as far as teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something that would be taken lightly. I look to him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thank you. He motions for me to take my seat, my legs feeling like sticks as they carry me there. This is gonna be a long day. I don't think Hanako would tell him. I don't think so. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Hanako, did you tell... She looks up at me and shakes her head. That's a big relief. It's just... Just... Well, hello there, Hee-chan! It's nice to see you again today! I grimace and turn towards the unmistakable voice coming from behind me. That was way too upbeat a tone of voice to feel comfortable, even from Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. Shizune's, though, is a very bad sign. That is a face of danger right there. The one she wears has become notched into my brain as her I have got you seven ways from Sunday smile. Hi, Shizune. Misha, you, uh, you look happy to see me. Dot, 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 question mark. Not feeling well yesterday, Hee-chan? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't, but I'm feeling better now at least. Dot, dot, dot. That's good to know, Hee-chan. <laughs> Why do you get the feeling that Shizune is leading me into a trap? You sound like you're not being completely serious. Dot dot dot. Oh no, Hee-chan! We're genuinely pleased that you're all better now! Dot dot dot. Shizune is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh no. In fact, we're quite worried about you! After all, you, Hanako, and Lily were all absent from class on the same day! Yep, she's got us. <laughs> so thoroughly that all I can do is sign defeat. I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just kind of not tell anyone? It's a bit late for that, Hee-chan. I suppose she's right considering the looks I got as I entered class. Still, things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations, so we'll probably be fine. Hanako's face sinks a little further. Such attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone for her. Going by Shizune and Misha's reactions, I think they noticed this as well. Dot dot dot. The only reason why we're giving you such a hard time is you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? It takes a while to recollect what happened then given the haze induced by the generally awful state I was in at the time. Oh right, the knocking. That was you too. Dot dot dot. It was, and you left us there for ages. After we taken all the effort of coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry, I was having a problem with nausea, a problem with nausea. 
They're not buying it. I can't blame them. Shizune's head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little, and as she pulls it out, it turns out to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. Well, I think we all know where this is going. <laughs> it's the letter again. Since she points it towards me, I duly take it. This is what we're trying so hard to give you, Hee-chan! You don't check your... I turn up the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes just register what's written on the envelope. Iwunako. I stare at the envelope for a moment before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. There's a very strange, somewhat invasive feeling about their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwunako? It's nothing. Thank you for bringing me this, you two. I should think so! I thought we went through to get it to you! I step back and say my goodbyes. Misha theatrically pouts even as they go out the door, but Chizuni and Hanako remain very visibly curious by my reaction. I hope they won't interrogate me on this later. The smell of the gardens is, as always, a very pleasant sensation. Some of the most visible signs of how well-funded the school is, aside from its sheer size, are the expanse and condition of the grounds. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chatting, and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying summer here, keeping watch over the students and idly walking along the long concrete paths. I had never seen a sight like this in my home city. On excursions, maybe, but certainly never in the school or anywhere near where I lived. Even the bench I sit on to read is warmer thanks to the summertime sun, reminding me of why I haven't worn the school blazer even once yet. Considering this, the sunflowers and splashes of vibrant yellow coloring adorning the paper are quite appropriate for the time, if only the words written on it were as well. Here I was, thinking I'd manage to get over her when this trouble thing, this troublesome thing shows up. Her handwriting looks vaguely familiar at best, and only now that I see it again, I remember that she used to write in pink pen a lot. She was always very girly, for lack of a better term. But she was also quite fragile. I never knew if I liked this aspect of her or not, though with the arrival of this letter, that question seems to have become largely moot. The letter begins with not much more than an update on the state of things going on in her life. My old class had a good start to the school year, many are anxious about the exams they'll be coming in the future, etc. But it ends on a very personal, if brief, note. It feels a bit like she wrote most of the letters just to try and soften the blow from the ending. Yes, we are reading this again for the fourth time. <laughs> Fight me! I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when it matters the most, even though I like you so much. At least now, finally, I can be more honest. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I just said something. I hope you've managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, it also feels more final, somehow. I wonder if we'll meet again. Perhaps it's for the best that we don't. Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means, write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Iwanako. And so, that's that. Our relationship is over. Nice, neat, and tidy, with no ambiguity. I hadn't held on to any illusions I could ever begin anew. The last time she visited me, neither of us said a thing except for the one word she said as she left for the last time. Goodbye. Be that as it may, this feels more final. The capstone and experiment that both of us tried and failed at. A loud shout draws my eyes away from the letter. It's just some students horsing around, with one of the teachers standing nearby coming over to talk to them. Are you okay? Oh, that's Yuko's voice. Are you okay? A tentative voice comes from my side. For a moment, I assume it to be Hanako, but it's actually Yuko. Oh, hello, Yuko. I thought you'd be in the library. She gives a cheerful smile, one quite fitting the atmosphere, and flourishes the empty wrapper of a roll in her hand. She must have someone else covering for her while she grabs something to eat. It reminds me that I haven't had anything to eat yet. I don't feel hungry, though, and skipping one lunch won't hurt. Mind if I sit here? Sure, go ahead. I quickly slide the letter back into its envelope, slipping it inside my bag propped against the side of the bench as Yuko takes a seat. She drops the wrapper into a bin beside us. Without much else to do, I lean back and take what enjoyment I can from the sun, silently reflecting on the letter. The lush lawns, the clear blue skies, everything looks so different from the way it did back then. Even the school surroundings, from the hill it's on to the woods around it, are completely opposite to the urban scenery I remember. Maybe this is what it's like to feel homesick. 
Then again, it's not an outright bad sensation. The feel of the area around Yamaku, while very different, is also nice. I think I could get used to it. Hey, Hisao? Yeah? You didn't answer my question from before. I wasn't going to say anything, but you still look troubled. If you don't want to say anything, though, that's okay. I don't mind at all. I'm sorry for asking something strange like that. I don't mind. It's just... I got a letter from someone I knew before I came to Yamaku. It made me think about some things. I thought I'd manage to get over most of the problems that my accident caused, but now I'm not really so sure. I kind of wish I'd never seen it. I don't think that's good, Hisao. When my boyfriend left me, he did so very suddenly and never let me know why. At first, I was very depressed about it, but I decided to forgive him. You forgave him? Couldn't he at least have talked properly with you about it? He was always one of those people that found it difficult to come close to others. In the end, I decided that I fell in love with him for a reason. He was a good person, and I think that if I had been in his position, I would have probably just have found it hard to try and talk to him. I don't really see the connections to the letter I got. I mean that, um, how should I put this? It must have been very hard for that person to send that letter, and if they did, I think they must have thought very hard about exactly what to say. You would not go manage to write this letter and bring a final close to our relationship, something that I never managed to do. Whereas here I am, trying to protect and help Hanako as best I can, especially with Lily leaving for a while, and I'm not even able to deal with my own problems. Does that make sense? She's taking my non-response and furrowed brow is doubt. She really reads faces too much, just like a certain other person. Yeah, that makes sense. The letter was just kind of a shock, really. I think I tried to fool myself into thinking that my life reset when it came into Yamaku, but now I'm suddenly aware that it didn't. I'm at a bit of a loss of how to deal with these feelings. I think that's something I can't really help you out with. Sorry. It's fine. I think being able to talk with you helped me get things sorted out a bit better in my head, though. Thank you anyway. She nods and smiles sweetly. Yuko's a nice girl, so it's a shame she's so highly strung so often. The school bell ringing out startles us both. Ah, I was supposed to be back before the bell. <laughs> Oops. She jumps off the bench and almost races off without a second word, but turns on her heel as she remembered she was talking to me just now. I'll see you later, Hisao. Cheer up, okay? I'll try to. Thanks, Yuko. With a quick bow, Yuko takes her leave and begins her rush to the library. Her flight catches the curious eyes of a few passing students who are unenthusiastically trudging back to their classes after their fun. Reluctantly standing from the bench, I dust myself off and join them. Even while I walk through the gardens back to the main building, the thought of the letter in my bag doesn't stray far from my mind. We kinda had a conversation that was just the same like this in Chizune's route, but uh... It's nice, you know, get a feel of Hisao's feelings at the moment in the route. Also, wow, new, this is a new background. Oh my god. <laughs> the feeling of walking through the streets is one of very deep nostalgia. While Yamaku may be like the reverse of where I've lived in the past, the city at night is amazingly familiar. My eyes are moving constantly from the bright electronic screens glowing high in the night sky, to the street lamps piercing the darkness with their light, to the businessmen enjoying themselves at their work, and the busily talking couples on dates. Even if I didn't want to, I can't help soaking in every aspect of the city. I savor its familiarity like a s sweet candy sitting on my tongue. Lily is walking to my left with her cane, swaying to and fro, holding onto her sister's arm for guidance while talking to her. Oh, right, this is, uh, Lily's thing. She told us to do something Friday. Compared to traveling by taxi or bus, being driven by Akira in her rather nice car was a much more enjoyable experience. Whoa! <laughs> it's Hanako with the super cool hat. Maybe not for the person on my right, though. While Lily was used to her sister's driving style, and I quite liked the bit of excitement, Hanako was holding very tightly to the door for most of the trip. E everything looks so p pretty at night. Hanako quickly looks down yet again as she accidentally catches someone's gaze. Yeah, it does. My answer isn't very thoughtful since I'm distracted by so many thoughts that I find it hard to keep up on small talk. One of those distractions, aside from the city sights, is how Hanako looks. Ooh. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen her in something other than her school uniform or her pajamas. It gives me pa it gave me pause when I first saw her outfit when we met up at the school gate. Considering how much her head is lowered with people walk near us, I imagine that the hat she wears is more than a fashion statement. Well, initially, I was wary of Lily's plan to take us out into the city. When night fell, it became obvious she had thought about this. Not many people had paid Hanukkah much heed since the darkness hides her scarring well. So, we're in the city. Any ideas on what to do? Akira beams a smile. Something tells me that she's the one who's making this particular decision, even if her sister may have proposed the outing in the first place. 
You'll see. Just follow us. I nod and try my best to stifle a grimace. After what happened during Hanako's birthday party, I don't trust Akira's judgment all that much. We keep walking, and I notice we're passing more and more cafes, restaurants, and other eateries. Oh my god. Are we finally doing the karaoke thing? Every once in a while, a drunken man in a suit comes out of a bar, usually being supported by another, but for the most part, the customers around this part of the city look young and fashionable. Different kinds of music come and go as you pass by each business. The discord created by the overlap should be grating, but it reminds me so strong of the times I spend in the city with my old friends that I don't really mind. I don't know if you can hear it so well over the sound effects, but I love this song, Red Velvet. Hanako and I have started to drift a little apart from Lily and Akira. That comes to a stop when I hear a soft thud from beside me. S -s sorry By the time she writes herself from her apologetic bow, the middle-aged businessman she bumped into is walking away after mumbling a half-hearted apology. Hanako looks a little put off by the experience, and she quickly skips ahead to match my pace. I notice her head hanging low once more. She probably bumped into him because she was looking downwards and not where she was going. I stepped to the side a little and put one hand in her far shoulder, drawing her closer. Hisao? It's okay, you can walk closer to me if you want. Hanako hesitates, but eventually nods in assent. After a couple of times when I thought we had arrived at Kira's destination, we reach our target. By now, we're- uh oh, <laughs> I accidentally skipped. By now, we're below the elevated walkways and past the most garish and brightly lit places. I'm a bit surprised. The average age of those around us is distinctly older, and the smell of cigarette smoke is pretty thick. The area is far from seedy, though, and it's a little amusing to see Lily's reactions to the smell of the smoke. While it's masked by the low talking of those around us, jazz music can be heard emanating from inside. Looking up the dimly lit sign, it becomes obvious why. A jazz club. I have to admit, this isn't what I expected. Lily gives an amused snort and a smile. Somehow, I feel like I should have known it, Akira. As we talk aside, as we talk outside, I notice more and more odd sideways glances directed our way. People awkwardly catch themselves staring and look away, but that just makes it more obvious. I noticed this occasionally when we were walking, but it's more pronounced now. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. An average-looking Japanese teenage guy, just a little taller than normal, isn't the type to draw attention without making an effort. Hey, come on! Just because you're teenagers doesn't mean you can't have a taste, right? Well, I don't really mind the music, if that's what you mean. I, I don't mind it either. She's only just managing to force the words out. It contrasts heavily to when we we're alone in Yamaku, and it disappoints me a little that she's so highly strung for what's supposed to be a good time out on the town. It's hard to read Hanako's face as she keeps looking downwards. It's a little wonder if she doesn't come out often to the city because of this, and it makes me a little thankful that my own scarring is easily hidden. Lily has a similar way of attracting people's gazes, but the reason for it is clearly different. She hardly looks like a native, and the same can be said for her sister. That much is far more noticeable than her blindness from a distance. She may not be able to see this for herself, but I have little doubt that she should hear the odd whispered phrase from people who think they're out of earshot. Be that as it may, she doesn't seem to show any sign of either annoyance or pleasure at the attention. Akira is still as confident as ever, though. Flashing a smile, she strides in with Lily by her side, and the two of us following behind. I'd expected my eyes to need adjusting to the light inside, but it's not much brighter than outside. The music we'd heard is clearer now, mixing with the sound of glasses moving on the tables and counter, and the husky chatter of the patrons. Looking to my right reveals the music source, a jazz group playing behind some tables. The patrons seem to be mostly men, and though there's a handful of women, nobody looks under 30. Aside from us, of course. It feels a little like we've stepped into the 1920s, and the atmosphere is quite agreeable. I'm not completely comfortable simply because of my age, but were I older, I would probably feel quite at home. Monaco seems a bit more relaxed now, probably just nobody looking at her. Everybody's talking between themselves, drinking, or watching the band. Akira casually takes a seat at the counter without even glancing around. She's probably come here before. Lily retracts her cane, feeling out the bar stool on the edge of the counter before taking a seat beside her sister. The bartender takes a brief break from polishing a glass to watch her before putting it down and coming over. Good evening, ladies. Or should I... No, let me do a more masculine voice. I'm tired of doing girls' voices. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. What'll it be? Just a scotch, thanks. Lily? May I have a glass of cam... Wait, may, uh, may I have a glass of cham... A black-suited elbow hits her side sharply. O orange juice, please. No problem. Coming right up. The bartender starts to pour their drinks. A couple of seconds pass before Akira suddenly remembers that Hanako and I are indeed here and turns around to us. You two want anything, or are you just gonna stand there? Ankum seems to be getting a bit restless. 
No matter where we're going to seat ourselves, there's gonna be people right next to her, and I don't think she looks convincingly older than 20, unlike Lily. Looking around, there's a game section to our right. A couple of billiards tables can be seen in the corner, and nobody's using them either. Really? Whenever I go to a place with billiards, it's always fucking full. <laughs> I glance to Hanako, about to ask her if she'd like to play, but she's already looking longingly in the same direction. Maybe it says something that we can get by with so much few, with so few words nowadays. We'll uh, go play pool over there. Akira leans back to see past me before shrugging and sitting back up. It seems you'll have to put up with me. Uh, it seems you'll have to put up with only me for company. How unfortunate. Have fun, you two. We turn and set off for the abandoned corner with Hanako taking the lead. The prospect of a nice, quiet game away from everyone makes her walk noticeably faster. Her eyes stay firmly fixed on her prize. The table's full size and well lit despite the surrounding darkness, thanks to the bright overhead lights. A huge painting of, uh, something covers the wall. There aren't many people milling about this corner of the club, and I can see Hanako becoming a little less tense as a result. You n know how to play? I'm no expert, but yeah, I do. Then, um, eight ball? Sure. Hanako gets the chalk and two cues from a set of hooks against one of the walls, while I fetch the balls from the table's pockets and grab the rack from a shelf underneath. She patiently waits as I get the table set up. After slotting the final ball into the rack and doing some last adjustments, I end up having to fight my perfectionist urges and getting the bottom row of balls exactly perpendicular with the edges. With the balls arranged and ready for play, I step back and take my cue from her outstretched arm. I carry out a quick inspection of the tip before I'm satisfied that it's in good condition. So, you've played before? Once, or twice. I, I just, just, just kind of know the rules. The air between us feels a little awkward. She's still pretty nervous, understandably, given that we're in public. Eventually, the silence becomes too much even for Hanako, and she begins to quietly stammer. Who will break? I think for a moment before reaching to my pocket and drawing the coin. I'll take heads, your tails. After an auto-agreement from Hanako, I flick the coin up in the air, catch it, and flip it over into the back of my left hand. Looks like it's you that gets to break. This is cool. This is really cool. <laughs> Hanako nods again before taking up a position at the end of the table. I just want to say, I fucking love pool <laughs> so much. She's not usually this quiet around me, but I'm not wholly sure if it's because of the tidbit of information about her past that slipped out moments ago. The cue comes back in a practiced gesture before smacking dead into the center of the cue ball with a thud. The white ball skates across the smooth green expanse before smashing into the carefully arranged balls at the other end. Balls skitter across the table at high speed. The break was good, with the balls being nicely distributed around the table. My eyes are already flicking from one to another to pick out the easiest candidates to pocket. Hanako retreats from the side and I take my shot. Well done. It's only after Hanako says this that I realize the ball I was shooting at was sunk. I look at her and notice a small smile on her face. It's nice how playing games seems to loosen her up a little. Uh, I guess I'm stripes then. I take a step back and let her take the next shot, but she doesn't advance to the table. Rather, she looks down a little and rubs her arm. By now, I can identify this as one of her gestures that means she wants to say something, but isn't sure enough of herself to do it. What's up? It's just, you had a n nice smile. Do you like playing this? I sigh and lean back against the table. I like playing, yeah. I think I was smiling because it's really nostalgic, though. Hanako tilts her head quizzically. Me and my friends used to play pool in the game centers near where we lived pretty often, and at night, too. W wouldn't your parents- My parents both work, so they didn't mind me not being in the house. I stayed on top of schoolwork pretty easily as well, so there's plenty of time to do other stuff at night. Our conversation dies down with Hanako's timidity getting the better of her. With Hanako's timidity getting the better of her. Oh man, I wonder how long it'll take for me to stop messing words up. Maybe the last route. Maybe by the last route, I'll finally stop messing up words and stuttering. In response, I get off the table and let her take her turn shooting. There aren't many solids in easy positions, so Hanako bends down and takes a while to line herself up properly. Hanako's expression is the same as when we play chess. A relaxed but focused concentration. Athletes sometimes talk about getting to a zone where nothing unnecessary enters her mind, and I wonder if it's that something she can do. Her posture is good, better than mine to be sure. It's very close to a textbook method of playing, whereas I tend to contort myself into what a position I feel is most natural for the shot I'm taking. She lines up the cue. Look at her determination, look at the determination on her face. <laughs> the cue comes back and she does a couple of practice movements to make sure she's lined up correctly. Hanako takes games so seriously. It's the only real hobby I know she has outside of reading. 
It feels good to be able to share this kind of experience with her. She takes the shot after careful consideration, and the cue ball zooms off towards the ball, sitting at a slightly awkward angle near the corner. Hanako's careful preparation pays off as the cue ball hits and sends the ball rolling towards the corner pocket. For a moment, it looks like it'll stop just in the lip of the hole, but it eventually tilts just enough to drop in. Man, that was a hard shot. If you can pull that off, I don't think I have much hope. I'm not th that good. It's not just a shot, though. Even when lining it up, you looked really serious. You're like this with chess, too. The praise makes her a little flustered. She sets the cue against the table and stands, turning to me. I just like those kinds of things. Her fingers are twisting and turning tightly. When I was in the orphanage, I just c kept doing the things I liked before. If I p played games with the others, th that was enough for the helpers there, so... I'd never thought about it that way. Staff in an orphanage would naturally want to have everyone socialize at least a little. If it's okay for me to ask, what was it like for you at the orphanage? Why do you want to know? I've touched a nerve, but the fact that she responded at all shows that there's at least a chance she'll answer my question. Before, she likely would have just shrunk away from it without a word. I'll tell you, but... But... Could you t tell me who e e what Iwanako is? Iwanako? Oh, the letter. I wonder how long she's been waiting for the right opportunity to ask me this. I'm surprised, but don't hesitate. Sharing information is naturally a matter of give and take. She's, uh... Someone I used to like. Her nervousness subsided, at least for the time it took to ask. Her curiosity is getting the better of her, and I feel a bit uncomfortable to be questioned on this of all that matters. There's no way I could spill out all my feelings about Iwanako here. I don't even know what myself my feelings regarding her are, even after talking to Yuko earlier, and I want to avoid the subject around Hanako. Hanako doesn't look overly satisfied with the awkward ending to the discussion, but thinks better of continuing it. She's only just managing to ask me in the first place without knowing that I wouldn't want to talk about it. I move to finally take my own shot. The lack of talking between us is filled by the, ca by the chatter of other patrons in the band at the other end of the club. Spying a shot that doesn't look too difficult, I try and shoot for it. The cue ball taps the ball, and the trajectory is about right, but I put in too much power. It grazes the corner of the hole and moves off to the side, just skirting the pocket. I grip my teeth a little. I was pretty good at this game, and it's frustrating to have deteriorated so much. I step back and let Hanako take her turn, glancing towards the counter where Lily and Akira are sitting. They're talking busily between themselves, and seem to be having a good time. I turn back to Hanako as she takes her shot. With the same face as before, she lines herself up and sharply pushes the cue. Just as before, she sinks the ball she was aiming for. It drops into the side pocket more cleanly than her last, though. It looks as if she's getting a bit more into the groove of the game. Nicely done. She hesitates for a moment and begins to address me without turning her head. The orphanage was nice. It felt a bit like Yamaku does, and the staff was r really kind. But as th the years went on, I realized something. I was d different. It feels strange to hear her speak so candidly about herself. She's audibly forcing the words out. It reminds me of when she insisted she tell me about the fire. Hanako must feel that she has to tell me of such things if I'm willing to talk to her about my own past. Her grip on the her grip her grip on the cue tightens as she continues to speak. M most of the children there were up for adoption, just like I was. But unlike me, they gradually left one by one. By the time I went to Yamaku, I was among the oldest children there. For a while, I helped with some of the younger children, but eventually... I lay a hand on her shoulder. She's forcing herself by now. It's okay. She looks mildly surprised for a moment, but then nods before sitting down her cue and turning towards me. Do you really think so? Yeah, I think so. Even when Lily's away, I'll be around to protect you, right? Hanukkah looks at me for a long time, and I'm taken a bit off guard. Her expression hasn't changed from before, still looking somewhat maudlin, and silences between us aren't un unusual. Uh, ignore the fact that I just stuttered on the word unusual, and Google, show me the definition of the word maudlin. Thank you, Google. <laughs> I think it's the fact that she's holding such prolonged eye contact that makes us feel a bit odd. It feels as if she's judging me. It's a very strange, vaguely uncomfortable feeling. Hanako? I, I understand. Thank you. She smiles and looks away a little, but it feels stilted. Hanukkah wasn't very good at faking emotions, and this is no exception. I move to the table and take my turn to try and distract myself, but it doesn't seem to work. Does she think I'm not up to the task of helping her? Is she disappointed in me? I'm probably overthinking this. 
Well, his silences are just an accepted fact of life by now, sometimes I do wish she'd speak more. With a thud, I send the white sphere careering down the table onto my target. Ah! Hanako sees what's happening just as I do. The ball hits hard, with the striped ball I'd intended to sink veering off towards the eight ball. Sure enough, as both Hanako and I look on and bite our lips, they connect and the black ball rolls leisurely into a corner pocket. All I can do is sigh. It looks like Hanako is smiling again though, so maybe it wasn't for naught. Ah, that was an awful shot. You win. It seems I'm getting pretty rusty after all this time. Hanako bends down and begins to shoot the remaining balls into the closest pockets. I almost ask if we could play another game, but a quick check of my watch confirms that the night is getting pretty late. Lily and Akira appear to still be drinking at the counter. Seems like we'll have to drag them away. Um, Hisao? I turn back to Hanako, who's still looking over at the pool table shooting balls. Her voice sounds different from before. I'm here for you as well. Ah. I suddenly find myself blushing. It's only natural that she respond this way, given what I said earlier, but it's still a shock to actually hear it. Just what is my relationship with this girl? I want to protect her, to make her happy. I'm not really sure that's something like love, but I don't think these are the same kinds of feelings I have for Lily either. I feel sorry for her, having gone through so much of her life. Her parents died in a house fire, and she lived in an orphanage for most of her childhood. I can't even imagine that kind of life. But I feel like there's so little I can do for her, especially now that Lily is going to be leaving the country. Hanako and I finish tidying up the table in queues and pick up Lily and Akira on our way out of the club. It feels like something changed between Hanako and me. I can't quite place what it is, but Hanako's acting differently now. I feel like we're further apart, if anything. So, you enjoy yourselves? Hanako and I both nod and agree. The game was good, and we both did learn more about each other, so it's an honest answer. Lily appears to be a little distracted. Worried about the trip, Lily? She pauses before sighing and smiling weakly. A little. It means quite a bit. The comment turns her a clap on the shoulder from her sister. Hanako smiles back, too. You'll be okay, Lily. I hope you can enjoy your time over there. Thank you, Hanako. I'll try to. It'll be nice to be back with my family, after all, no matter for how brief a time it may be. With that, the four of us begin to walk to the car park where Akira's car is. We continue to talk between ourselves, but it's mostly just small talk. Hmm. So, I mean, uh, we both just vow to protect each other. I mean, we're basically married at this point. <laughs> Alright, that's all the time I have for today's episode of Katawa Shoujo, but before I leave, I just want to say something. Today, uh, today is the 28th of February, and today should hopefully be the day that this video goes up. So that means that for every day in February, I uploaded at least one video. I have uploaded 28 videos this month. It was a goal of mine from the beginning of the month to uh, try to get a video every day just to see if I could and to, you know, challenge myself. I uh, ended up, you know, learning a bit about editing and stuff and <laughs> scheduling, but I was able to get it done. <laughs> I'm uh, really proud of that. <sighs> 28 videos in one month. Um, <laughs> here's the thing though, don't expect this next month. Uh, I think I'll make an, an additional video just talking about it, talking about like my goal and everything that I achieved. But, uh, I, you should expect, like, more videos regularly, not, like, once a month or anything, but I don't know, like, three times a week? Just don't expect one daily. <laughs> but yeah, that was a really great moment in, uh, episode, scene, chapter, whatever we were calling it. <laughs> uh, yeah, pool is one of my favorite games to just play. So, um, already, we've been on, like, two perfect dates. The, that, that's my idea of two perfect dates, reading a book quietly next to each other, and playing pool. I mean, that's that's perfect. Um, yeah, that's all the time I have for today, and I'll see you next time where uh, Lily's gonna go away. And uh, fly over to Scotland. I'll see you then. Peace.